So as you guys know, I'm not really much of a tournament player, but if there was one to play, it's the WSOP main event. This impressive looking building back here is called the Rio Hotel. It's actually their convention center, a little bit off to the side, but it's where the World Series of Poker is held every year. And they have tons of events, none of which I'm particularly interested in. But this one specifically sounds like a little bit of fun, so why not? It's 11 in the morning right now. I don't really have any expectations. If I make it more than two hours, yeah, two hours, that's the benchmark where I think I'll be proud of myself. And just to be real with you guys, I've done no studying. I haven't talked to anyone about how to win this thing. My plan is to just not punt my stack and run good. Pretty solid plan, right? Alright guys, here we are playing the main event. Everyone starts with 60,000 in chips and blinds go up every two hours. That's about all I know, so here we go. In the first hand, I open a 500 with 6-5 suited, and then the player on my left makes it 1500. Action gets back to me, and seeing as we both have a lot of chips, I make the call. Flop isn't great though, ace-9-8, but when I check it to him, he checks it back. Turn gives us some hope in the form of a pair and a straight draw. I check again but this time he bets 1200. I think he most likely has a big ace that checked back the flop, or maybe even a hand like kings or queens that plays this way, so I decide to turn my hand into a bluff with the check raise here, trying to apply some pressure to those holdings. I make it 4000, but he doesn't fold just yet. River brings no help, the deuce of hearts. Still seems to me like he has ace king or ace queen, so I throw one more punch, this one for 11,000, but we get called right away. I turn it over and he shows pocket aces. Not the best start, but at least we get an opportunity for redemption with 6-5 suited again a few minutes later. Same deal, I open a 500. No re-raise this time, but we do get called by three players. Flop is much better now. King five deuce with two hearts. Checks to me, I bet 700. Got on my left folds, but the button raises to 1800. Big blind folds and of course I make the call. Turn is about as good as it gets, the five of diamonds. I check it over to him and this time he bets 2200. I happily make the call and we see the eight of clubs on the river. I check it a third time, but he finally waves the white flag and checks it back. I turn it over and we win. Moving along to the second level now, there's an early position open to 700 and I call in the big blind with pocket fours. The flop is ridiculous. Nine, four, four. Okay, I check but he checks it back. Turn is the king of spades, and as much as I want to bet, I think the best play here is to check again since this is a card he's probably going to bet on, whether he connected or not. So I check it, and thankfully he does bet. $1,000, well, not dollars, chips, units, I don't know, monopoly money, call it what you want. Anyway, I raise to 3,600 now, and it seems he does have something because he makes the call. River is the six of spades, now I bet 10,000, and after some thought, he calls. So, this was a fun hand. In the next one, I open 9-7 suited on the button to 700 and get called by both of the blinds. Flop is ace-9-6, which checks around. Turn is the jack of hearts, small blind checks again, and now the big blind bets 1500. With so many draws and bluffs available on this board, I decide to call at least once, but the small blind calls as well, so that's not good. River brings some help though, the seven of diamonds. Small blind checks a third time, and this time the big blind checks also. Action is on me now, and this is a clear example of how clueless I feel in tournaments. In a cash game, I would almost always bet this for value, even if there was a decent chance we get raised or called by a better two pair. But here, I'm not sure if that's correct, so I end up just playing it safe and checking back. 
Turns out it doesn't matter too much because the small blind announces a seven. Big blind says, that's good. So I turn my cards over and we take it down. But let's not ignore that I played that river like a scared little boy. Later on, I open ace 10 suited to 700 and then the button makes it 1100. Not sure what to make of this, so I just call and we go heads up to queen jack six with two spades. About as good of an ace high as we can hope for, right? I check it over and he bets 1500. Could mix here between calling or raising. This time I decide to call and we see the ace of clubs on the turn. I check again and now he fires for 2500. No need to bluff now that we have top pair, so I call and we make a straight on the river. I feel like he's most likely going to check back on this card, so I decide to lead for a small size, but he releases right away. Level 3 now, I open pocket 5s to 1000 and get called by 4 players, somehow. Flop is interesting. 4-4-4. Four, four, four. Mixed feelings about it, I guess. I decide to continue with a bet of 1700 and get called by 2 players. It's very possible now that we're up against better full houses like pocket sixes through pocket nines. So when the turn comes to 10, giving up seems fine. But instead, I decide to pretend I have a bigger pocket pair. If they have what I think they have, it's probably going to be really difficult to hang on. So I fire for 6K this time. And after some deliberation, they both fold. Nice. Next, we get a warm welcome into level four with pocket aces. I open a 1200 and get called by the button and the big blind. Three of us to a flop of 1075 with two clubs. Now the big blind decides to lead for 2500, which is kind of strange, but all right, I call and then the button puts in a raise to 7500. Big blind folds and now we're in a weird spot. Not in love with having just one pair, but can't fold aces to a single raise, especially holding the ace of clubs. So I make the call and we see the king of clubs on the turn. I check it and now the button bets 7,000. It seems to me that we're up against either two pair or perhaps a set. So instead of just calling, I think it's better to turn this hand into a bluff since he can't be holding the nuts. Even if he has a set, I think he's most likely gonna fold that on any river that doesn't pair the board. So I make it 18,000 to go, trying to set up an all in on the river, but it won't come to that because my opponent decides on a fold. Later on, there's an open to 1200, middle position calls and I look down at ace jack suited in late position. I decide to put in the re-raise to 4500 and a bit surprisingly, they both call. Flop is good, ace seven deuce with one club, action checks to me and I place a bet of 3500. Initial raiser folds, but the player in between makes the call. Turn improves this to three of a kind, but honestly, I don't think we needed it. Feels like we're up against either a seven or perhaps a pocket pair that decides to call on the flop versus my small bet. Anyway, he checks again, and on this turn card, I think it's fine to mix between checking and betting. This time, I decide to check it back, and we go to the eight of hearts on the river. Now my opponent fires for 9,000, and for some reason, I did not have a good feeling about this. Something about the way he bet, plus the fact that this isn't really the type of board people bluff on, I don't know, it just didn't feel right, but folding would be absurd after checking back the turn. So after a few minutes, I just toss in the call and we get shown pocket eights. So that sucks. In the next hand, I open queen five suited in late position to 1200. A little bit wide, but still fine with the big blind ante in play. Anyway, I get called by the button, small blind and big blind. So maybe it's better to tighten up a little. Oh wait, never mind. we flopped three queens. However, when the blinds check it over to me, I don't like betting here because it would be almost impossible to be bluffing. So I check and the button checks as well. Turn is the nine of spades and now the small blind leads for 2,500. Only I make the call. So we go heads up to the jack of spades on the river. Once again, the small blind bets, this time 5,000. I call right away and we get shown pocket fours. Hmm. Okay, a short while later, there's an open to 1300 before I look down at pocket jacks. I make it 3400 to go and only the initial raiser calls. Flop is pretty lame, king, queen, four. He checks and I check it back. Turn is another king and once again he checks. I'm happy to check again and we see the eight of spades on the river. He checks for a third time now and I think we can go for some thin value here. 
He could easily have a queen that checks three times, but he could also have some smaller pairs. So I decide to bet 4,500 now. He thinks it over for a bit and calls. I show and he mucks. Moving along to level five now, the last level of the day. Unfortunately, I folded every single hand this level, which definitely hurt my stack, but I never picked up anything playable except for ace queen in the big blind with about 15 minutes remaining. There's an open to 1500 from middle position and I decide to make it 5000. He makes the call and we go to a flop of jack six three rainbow. I continue with a small bet and he calls. Looking for a good turn card to continue firing and the 10 of hearts definitely qualifies. It's gonna put him in a tough spot with any jack or smaller pocket pair so I place a bet of around 10,000 this time and luckily we get a fold so we get back some chips before some guy in a suit tells me to put my chips in a bag and get out. So, it's the next day. I was just way too exhausted after day one to talk to the camera and do the whole recap thing. But bottom line is, we made it to day two. Ended up bagging around 52,000. Obviously less than starting stack, but still not too bad. A little bit of room to maneuver. Coming back to, I think, 400, 800 blinds. Meaning I have like, I don't know how much that is, 60 big blinds or so. Here's the math. But anyway, I don't really have any expectations. I'm just sort of enjoying the ride. Making the money would be really cool, but definitely not in my expectations. Like I said, I just want to have a good time and share with you guys what it's like to play the main event, at least through my eyes. So far, it's been fun. Let's see if we can keep it going in day two tomorrow, which is in around 12 hours from right now. But for you guys, it's like five seconds. Let's go. Okay, here we go again, this time starting off the day with 8-6 suited. Blinds are 400-800 with an 800 big blind ante, so I raise to 1800 and only the button calls. Flop is amazing, 9-6-6 with a flush draw. I continue with a bet of 2400 and he calls. Turn is the worst, 9 of clubs. We could easily be up against a 9, so I check it this time and he quickly bets 5000. I'm obviously not folding just yet, so I make the call and we see the 10 of hearts on the river. I check again, please don't bet, please don't bet, please don't bet, and he checks it back. I turn it over and we win the first hand of the day. I didn't get another playable hand until the following level when I look down at King Jack. I open for 2000 and get called by the player on my left and the big blind. Flop is decent, Jack 9-9 with two spades. Big blind checks, I decide to check and now the player on my left bets 3000. Big blind calls, so this situation is already slightly alarming, but of course I can't fold just yet, so I make the call. Turn is the eight of diamonds, big blind checks, I check again, and luckily the player who bet the flop checks it back now. River improves us to a full house, the nine of hearts. Big blind checks it for a third time, but something smelled weird about this hand. I feel like either one of these guys could be laying in the weeds with a nine, so I decide to check it, and it checks through. Big blind shows down a jack, but his kicker is the nine of diamonds. So we're not gonna win this one. In the next interesting hand, I open ace 10 suited and get called by two players. Flop comes 10 high, so when the big blind checks, I continue with a bet of 2200. And now the player behind me raises to 7,000. Big blind quickly folds and it's back on me. Already a weird spot here, but she had been playing a bunch of hands, so she could certainly be doing this with a flush draw, straight draw, even a weaker 10. So I decide to call and we go to the deuce of spades on the turn. I check again and this time she fires for 10,000. Facing this sizing, I don't really think she's bluffing anymore, but we're getting good odds to improve with any spade, perhaps a 10 or ace. So I make the call again and we see the four of hearts on the river. Nothing to do but check, and she quickly announces all in for 20,000. 
Easily the toughest spot so far, especially being that we're up against a loose player. Pocket fours and pocket tens are both extremely unlikely, so the hand I'm most concerned about is pocket eights. But aside from that hand, I would imagine she's just bluffing. I don't know. In a cash game, I would call right away, but in a tournament, I'm just lost. After a painful two or three minutes, I decide on a call. Good news is she does not have pocket eights. Bad news is she has aces. Looking back, I think a fold might be better, but it's pretty close either way. Not looking good now with only 17,000 left in my stack. I open queen jack in middle position and get called by the button, small blind, and big blind. We find top pair on jack 5-3. Small blind checks, but the big blind leads for 3,500. Well, time to send it in, I guess. So that's what I do for my remaining 14 or 15,000. Button folds, but then the small blind goes all in himself for 60,000. That is not good. Big blind folds, thankfully, but it seems we're probably screwed until he shows ace eight suited of spades, of course. Probably one of the only hands that plays this way that doesn't have us crushed. Anyway, we're off to a run out for my tournament life. Turn is an offsuit king, and the river is an eight. Whew, all right, we're still alive. A few minutes into level six, I look down at the dream. Pocket aces, and a great time to get them as well. I open to 2400, and now the button makes it 7,000. Action gets back to me, and with only around 39,000 in my stack, there's not really a size I could raise to that wouldn't look super strong, so I decide to just send it in, and after a little bit of thought, the button makes the call. So off to a run out once again with our tournament life on the line. This time we're up against pocket queens. Oh God, please don't give me a bad beat. Holy shit, we flopped quads again? A little bit of overkill, but all right, I'll take it. And somehow we're back to life despite the ace 10 disaster. And we're gonna try to keep that momentum going with ace king of hearts. There's an open from middle position to 2800 and then the button makes it 7,500. Action is on me in the big blind, and well, I'm not gonna fold, and I don't want a cold call, so time to ride the wave, I guess. I kick it up to 18,000, and only the button makes the call. Flop comes 10, 6, 3 with one heart. Not great, but still a board on which I would bet small with all my hands, so I place a wager of 11,000, and he makes the call. Turn is the nine of spades, not a good card to continue, so this time I slow down and check it. And after considering his options, the button shoves for around 50 or 60k. Nothing to do but fold here, so that's what I do. It's a pretty standard hand, I think, but it did cost a big chunk of my stack. Level nine now, I open queen jack to 3200 from early position and get called by the small blind. Flop comes 10, nine, six, all diamonds. He checks, I bet 2800, and he calls. Turn is a six of hearts, pairing the bottom card. Seems like a good spot to continue representing over pairs, flushes, full houses, etc. I did raise in early position, after all. So I bet 10,000 when he checks now, but once again, he makes the call. Pretty much done with it at this point until the eight of hearts comes on the river, giving us the best possible straight. He checks a third time, and with only around 36,000 left, I'm just gonna send it in. If he has a flush or full house that didn't raise me on the turn, bless his heart, here's all my chips. When I shove all in, he makes the call rather quickly, which is a little scary, but I turn it over and he mucks. Very nice to get another double up, but unfortunately the rest of this level was not great. I was very card dead, blinds were getting expensive, and on top of that, I was losing hands like these. I open eight seven suited in late position to 4,000, and the big blind makes it 13,000. I call in position and completely miss the flop. So after he bets, I fold. Later on, middle position opens to 4,500. I call in the small blind with pocket fives and the big blind calls as well. Flop is four three deuce with two clubs. I check and it checks around. Turn is the eight of spades. I check again. And now the big blind bets 6,000. Initial razor folds and I think it's likely the big blind has an eight or a bigger pocket pair, but pretty unlikely he has a straight since we have two fives in our hand. 
So I decided to apply some pressure against his one pair holdings with a check raise to 17.5K. If we get called, I'm planning on going all in on a variety of rivers, plus we could actually improve to a straight. But the big blind tells me to get lost instead and announces all in himself for way more than I have. I got a fold, so that's what I do, sorry for trying. And yeah, just like that, we're back in the danger zone with around 35,000 chips remaining. There's about 15 minutes left in the day, and I'd like to make it to day three, but when I get dealt ace-jack, folding would just be way too tight. If it's my time to die, so be it. I'm all in for what is about 17 big blinds. Player on my left looks down at his cards, thinks it over for a bit, and calls. Everyone else gets out of the way, so here we go again. Tournament life on the line versus king queen of spades this time. And that's it. I have no more chips left and there's no chip runners anywhere to bring me more. So I guess it's time to go. Couldn't make it to the money, which was day four, but I hope you guys enjoyed the hands. Okay, so it's been about a week or so since the main event. I just realized that I never filmed an outro, so here we are, the Stater Bros parking lot by my house. That's right, no longer in Vegas, back home. The Vegas trip is over, but it was a good time, you know? Maybe not so much the tournament itself that this video is about, but overall I had a good time over there. As far as the tournament goes, I made it to the last level of day two, which I gotta say, given what I expected initially, I'm more than okay with it. Now I figured we might have some questions that are frequently asked, at least for this vlog. So let me just try to get those out of the way. Yes, I did have all my own action. I didn't sell or take a loan or whatever. I just showed up with 10,000 and gave it to the nice people of the Rio, uh, never to be seen again. Also, what's next now that this Vegas trip is over? And to be honest with you guys, I don't really know. I don't have any immediate plans. So if you work at a poker room or you know someone who works at a poker room that might be interested in having me come over and maybe spend a day or two there, make a vlog, perhaps a meetup game, etc. Let me know. My email is always in the description box. And right now is a good time because I'm trying to plan some stuff for December and the following year coming up. But yeah, that's it for this time, guys. If you watched all the Vegas vlogs, I really appreciate you. If you just saw this one, that's fine too. Overall results for the trip were positive, even though this video is a minus 10K session, technically speaking. I did win around 20K or so playing cash. So it was still a profitable trip, but that aside, I had a good time and that's mostly what I care about when I'm trying to make these videos. But yeah, that's it for now, guys. As always, thanks so much for the support. I know this was a really long vlog, so if you gave it a thumbs up, I really appreciate that. And I'm happy to say I'm back home and it's time to play some cash where they don't make me put my chips in a bag when I'm done playing. <sighs>